How's it going everyone? It is Drago. We're back with another My Hero Academia video and we're going to be talking about the fourth My Hero Academia movie, that being My Hero Academia, Your Next. Spoilers for the movie, not so much for manga spoilers, maybe a bit of season 7, but that's about it. The variety of scenes in this movie compared to like previous movies where you're just kind of in one set location, like the location varies constantly throughout this movie like you barely stay in the same location for very long at all and that's mainly due to dark might's power with him constructing this world that they're in and the variety is actually very fun from like a video game level to like a carnival and then you have like a snowy mountain and particularly that video game level i love that they like added actual 8-bit music to it to make it seem more like a video game Villain wise, this movie very prominently focuses on Dark Might, which I would think it would, which I think out of all the villains in the movies so far, this was one of the more focused on ones. I think maybe before this movie, Nine was the most focused on. That's kind of been a problem in some of the My Hero movies where you don't get much villain focus. And also, I was actually kind of surprised that Deborah, of all people, was pretty darn prominent in this movie as well i mean you don't get much backstory at all with her but like she shows up in a lot of scenes actually and since i'm already talking about deborah i really liked her quirk it's really fun um how she can like put people in these like dream worlds honestly very similar to like the infinite Sukuyomi from naruto and how you get to see everyone's dreams that they're trapped in it was a very fun thing to see, but my favorite of them all, which honestly isn't much of a shock, is the Kid Deku dream to where you get Kid Deku in his room. He's like freaking out about all of his All Might stuff and like All Might's there. He's riding on his back like they're doing hero work together. It's so dang cute. It's like cuteness overload. I love it so much. And honestly, Dark Might's quirk is pretty fun too with him like using coins all the time and honestly in general it's just fun to see an evil all might and since i first heard the premise of this movie i love the idea of someone watching the all might versus all for one broadcast and basically becoming a villain because they saw it and like were inspired in the wrong way it is so kind of weird to hear all might's voice like saying like super evil things since we're talking about Dark Might already, I'm actually kind of shocked that Deku didn't have more opposition to him. Since he obviously is impersonating All Might and doing bad things. And I can see Deku very much not agreeing with that. And like All Might would never, I thought he would be a lot more angry throughout the movie at him. But honestly, Deku was pretty darn chill. And since I just mentioned Deku, uh, Deku in this movie, he had a freaking dope entrance. I loved his entrance that they gave like remixed tracks to go with it. Like, ooh, it, his entrance was so dang cool. Also, I just find it super fun to see like him and his classmates in like a UA car hunting down villains together and like using their quirks in tandem. It was such a cool thing to see UA doing that in 1A. And really, honestly, everyone has a role in this movie, not just 1A, like, almost like everyone from the series pretty much shows up. Probably like one of the bigger cameos that showed up in the movie, and honestly, I wasn't even expecting him to be in the movie, was Mirio, and I was like, so hyped when he just like, appears in the movie, and I was like, oh my goodness, Mirio's in the movie? Like, I never thought Mirio was gonna be in one of these movies. Talking about the, like, final battle, I absolutely love the first defeat of Dark Might with Todoroki, Bakugo, and Deku all saying their reasons why All Might is the best in the world, with them, like, chaining attacks off of one another and defeating Dark Might in the process. Like, I thought that moment was so freaking beautiful, and I loved each person's own personal reasons as to why they see all might as this like pedestal figure and why you dare not touch his legacy and when deku was doing his like rapid attacks to finish him 
At first, I thought he was honestly going to name out every state. And I was like, oh, dude, that'd be super cool if he did, like, every state as a smash to finish this guy. And that would be a cool way to have a final attack to be, like, every state smash, practically. Because he basically did United States a smash in the last movie. But he only did, like, the limited number of smashes together and then finished them which takes you into the second defeat of dark might which i think was a lot weaker because honestly not much dialogue is said at all and he's just a giant monster now and honestly the animation was pretty wild during this and it's honestly a bit harder to track and I think the second defeat did not have nearly the same impact as the first. And they honestly should have just kept Dark Might's defeat to that first defeat and not gave him a second round. Which, speaking of weak things, uh, there was a post credit scene for this movie. And yeah, it's, it's just basically a scene from Season 7. It honestly wasn't that worth it to see an image of All for One and Tomrod like, waking up. I would have liked maybe like some more scenes with the movie only characters or something else. And since I just mentioned the movie only characters, let's talk about them. The main one that really focuses on is Julio, but there also is Anna, which both of them have a backstory that's intertwined. Now, Anna has a honestly super interesting quirk. How she will buff people if you touch her and it is honestly super duper pretty like with the scenes that it has with like the flowers and like it has this like rose flower backgrounds like that stuff is really freaking cool looking and also her quirk has probably one of the most hardcore downsides that literally gives her strokes and Julia is honestly a racer head with the ability to permanently remove quirks Genuinely, like, if you factor in this movie as canon, you'd be like, where is he during this final arc right now? Because, like, he could just wipe out the villain side if he just erased all their quirks by touching them. Because actually, funnily enough, he did show up in one of the last episodes of season 7. So, like, he's technically part of the season. He's out there. As for those two's relationship, I actually really like their relationship. I think it's cute, it's sweet, and honestly, the music that they played alongside those two is so nice. Like, it's actually got such a different vibe that My Hero doesn't have. Like, it's such a different tone of music. They're talking about, like, movie characters as a whole. I think they're not maybe the strongest, but I still like them, and I love their interactions with Deku, like, particularly julio's interactions with deku like those are really good throughout this movie like those two just pretty much any interaction with deku is very fun and deku is honestly just still just as pure hearted as ever throughout this whole movie and he has so many fun scenes and honestly they give him like quite a few comedic bits and that goes for all of 1a too because all of them have fun moments and just fun banter between all of them and especially since how you split up all of 1a that you get kind of different groups of people and have them interact in different ways there was one fight though with deku fighting the guy that slows time i do not remember his name but i just know he was like slowing time i honestly thought at that exact moment he was gonna whip out gear shift you know, I was so expecting him to use gear shift in the movie, especially since, you know, he's using it in season seven. So, like, he probably knows it right now. I would imagine he does at least because it's taking place just before season seven. And that would have been such a cool time to use gear shift, like a guy that affects time. And, like, he's just like, nope, I'm just going to make myself way too fast for your time, dude. Or at least I thought he was going to use it against Dark Might to, you know, beat him. But... Sadly, no. Besides Red Riot getting, like, unbreakable, not too many people whipped out, like, special moves, like Todoroki's fire-ice combination thing that he's doing in Season 7. I'm blanking on the name. But I, definitely, I feel like Gear Shift probably should have shown up here. In this movie, compared to, like, the other movies, there is significantly less blood and damage that people take. Like, especially when you compare it to the last movie, World Hero Mission, to where they were, like, covered in blood. And, like, Bakugo was, like, getting straight up stabbed left and right. This movie, there is 
significantly less damage that anyone takes and honestly there really isn't much blood at all. I wonder if they were trying to censor things or bring things down to a different level. Who knows? And they made a anime opening for this movie, which none of the other movies have. And I think that's actually super fun. Like, I love the animation that they did for this opening. And honestly, the song, I think, is pretty good, too, for it. And obviously, that opening is very All Might-centric. But, like, even the comic styling of it is really freaking top-notch. And since we're kind of talking about the opening already, uh, the music in this movie is great. And honestly, there's quite a few remixes of like very popular My Hero tracks already that I think were pretty darn good. But throughout the whole movie, yeah, there's a lot of great music that they have for it. As for my rankings of all the My Hero movies, I think number one for me is still the first movie, Two Heroes, that... I don't think will ever be top for me because it was such a fun theater experience I had for that movie and it's just one of my best memories I've ever had. I think number two is the third movie, World Hero Missions. I think number three, I'm going to maybe put this movie just because I liked so much of the interactions and honestly just having Dark Might as a villain I think is just really fun. And finally, it would be Heroes Rising. And honestly, I'm going to say Heroes Rising and this movie are about equal for me. But I do very much like World Hero Mission and Two Heroes more. But that's just me. Overall, there's some honestly great animation in this. And it's just a really, really fun time for my hero fans. And I just really enjoyed this movie so much. It was a blast. So what are your guys' thoughts about My Hero Academia? You're next. Leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and this is Drago signing out.